know going in, every time there's a New Japan show, no matter what, the company's cucks and fanboy sheep are ready with a million defenses and a million and one damn excuses. And I saw them all throughout the show Sunday night via social media, and I can still hear those defenses and excuses in my head now. The stories that matter the most are the ones that are told inside the ring, thank you. The commentary usually isn't like this, it's usually awesome. Doing live TV is hard. It's hard, man, it's real hard. Everybody knows this show is just to promote next week's bigger show and the tension in the Bullet Club. You gotta give them time. They're still new to doing shows in the United States. Mm, yes. You know what? Maybe if you don't like it, you should stop watching because New Japan is unquestionably the best motherfucker wrestling in the world. It's so bad, just like what you heard there, that no matter what, the shills for this damn company will do whatever it takes to defend, excuse, and justify whatever this company does no matter what. I'm firmly convinced that if Chris Benoit killed his wife Nancy and his son in the middle of a New Japan ring, you would have cucks and fanboys defending that crap too. Talking about how it was just supposed to be a work and a mistake, an accident, Happened, and that's professional wrestling. It's not ballet after all. Like, I know that sounds crazy, but is it really that crazy? Is it? Is it? And my response to all of those excuses is bullshit. Here's what I call bullshit on the stories that matter that one's told in the ring. What the hell are you talking about? The vast majority of these matches on this card and many other New Japan cards are just randomly thrown together tag matches that have no story, that have no purpose, and even if they do, New Japan doesn't bother to actually tell the audience what the hell is going on and why they should care. And even though some of the hardcores love the flips and kicks, newsflash, ding dong, dumb dicks, a lot of other fans care about the crap outside of just that. The commentary is usually not like this. Well, every time I watch a New Japan show and it's got JR and it's Barnett, I'm guaranteed the commentary is going to absolutely suck. Barnett is terrible. Take his roided up UFC ass back to doing MMA and get his shit pushed in. And as far as JR, maybe the time has come. If not, then shape up before you have to ship the hell out. The whole thing about doing live TV is hard. I saw that several times. Are you kidding me? Like New Japan hasn't done television before? Are you insane? This show is just to promote next week's bigger show. No, it fucking wasn't. That was one part of it, but if it was just strictly and solely to promote next week's bigger show, which, by the way, they didn't mention a whole hell of a lot during the four hours on Access TV, then why the hell would they have come all the way to Long Beach, California to do the show? They're still new to doing this in the U.S. I saw that excuse several times. Bullshit! Wrestling is wrestling. That is no justification. That is no excuse. And if you use that as an excuse, that's pathetic. The whole, if you don't like it, then stop watching. No, how about if New Japan is trying to expand their audience, which clearly they are, because they are trying to come to United States soil, then how about they be on top of their stuff? How about they put together a better show? Because newsflash, regardless of what some of you cucks and New Japan fanboy sheep want to believe, you want to know who this company's target audience is with this type of show? It's me! 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 Right, this whole notion that they were just doing it to build the next week's show. No, they are doing these shows in the U.S. just like they're going to do the other one in July because they are trying to expand into the U.S. market, starting off on the West Coast, and that makes sense for them. So their target audience are not the cuckin' fanboy sheep that are going to ride or die with this product no matter what. It's the people like me, the under 40 male wrestling fan that's disenfranchised by the WWE product, loves wrestling but hates most of what's going on in the business right now. I'm the target audience. I'm the one they're going after, not you. They've already got you. And clearly, based off of the reactions of some of the hardcore New Japan fans, it's not hard to keep you. 
But speaking from my perspective, which from the New Japan perspective is the one that should matter in this particular case because they are trying to expand into this marketplace and win over wrestling fans like me, they missed the mark on several different levels. Yes, they missed the mark. And let me address this really quickly for the cuck and fanboy New Japan sheep. Not everything your damn company does is perfect. Not everything your company does is great. That is ridiculous and you need to stop. How could you possibly be that insecure about the wrestling you watch or love to where you cannot admit a single damn fault about any of it? I think about this as a wrestling fan, and I use Hogan and Taker as examples. They're my two favorites of all time. You don't see me, and you don't. And don't you dare say you do, because if you bother to research, you know damn good and well I don't. You don't see me sitting there and excusing and justifying and defending every crappy promo, angle, storyline, match that those two have ever been involved in over the years. Hell no! They are imperfect because nobody is perfect. Stop pretending that this New Japan crap is perfect. It makes me, if anything, appreciate the moments that were great. The greatness that they did show. Knowing that they were fallible just like anybody else. I think about Michael Jordan and Walter Payton, my two favorite athletes of all time. Michael Jordan was a gambleholic. Michael Jordan took seven years to win a championship. Michael Jordan was an incredibly selfish ball hog at times. Later on in his career, he was incredibly lazy at times on the defensive end. Walter Payton acted like a spoiled, entitled, bratty bitch in Super Bowl XX because he didn't get any touchdown. And later on in life, as soon as he was freaking retired and later on, he decided to run off away from his wife and his kids with his damn fucking girlfriend. It doesn't mean that the other things that they did weren't great. But I'm not going to sit there and rationalize, excuse, and justify all that crap. It happened. They are not perfect. Stop pretending like New Japan is perfect. Because honestly, when I know I've seen much damn better than this, and you're saying it's not Wrestle Kingdom and you shouldn't have... Bullshit! Bull! They are putting on a show. Their number one goal, especially when trying to expand into a new marketplace to attract... Who's that? Oh yes, that's right! Fans like me! Their number one goal of the program is to put the best possible show on. And last night was clearly not it. It is okay, you cuckin' fanboy New Japan sheep. Say it with me. The show was bad. The show was not good. The show may have... It sucked, okay? It is okay to admit that a show sucked for the company that you love. Are we that damn insecure? Are we that threatened? Because we love a product. When somebody comes in and calls it out and questions it and says, that's bullshit, I've seen you do better, and I'd expect you to do better next time. No! How the hell is that company that you love so much ever going to get better if you never offer any criticism? Nobody and nothing is perfect. Accept that. It is okay to say this show was not good. It is okay to not have to make 300 damn defenses and excuses for it. It sucked, it sucked! Move the fuck on and look forward to the next one! I don't even need to look because I already know how this is going to go down. 95% of the reviews via YouTube, wrestling websites, podcast, whatever, are going to be overwhelmingly positive. Creating this false sense of security that this crap was great, and it was not. It was crap, okay? But I, because I feel like you could take me seriously, because I will say something is good, whether you believe it or not, and I will talk about things that are bad, even though a lot of these other clowns, cuck, fanboy, sheep won't, I will take a few highlights from this show and talk about them. A show can be crappy and still have some good things on it. Unlike most of the rest of these cocks that are going to do these reviews will sit there and almost completely avoid the negative so that way they can fawn over themselves over the freaking positive because again we have to find ways to continue to justify and excuse why the hell we watch it instead of saying oh well not their best night yeah it sucked yeah it sucked let's be honest with each other hopefully next time it's better is that such a big freaking deal?
cool when the tickets came on sale for this show that they sold out in like 10 minutes. If anything, that is an indication that New Japan, especially when they're picking and choosing their spots and their locations, has much bigger drawing power. And frankly, undersold themselves in terms of this event and this venue. That Dave Meltzer, Brian Alvarez selfie is worth its weight in freaking gold. If you haven't seen it, you need to. It was epic. They had a date night at New Japan. How appropriate and how fitting for those two. The only thing that was missing was at the end of the night, Meltzer and Alvarez going into the ring and challenging Ibushi and Omega. That's right, the Golden Showers versus the Golden Lovers. That's what the people wanted to see. You want to talk about blowing the roof off the freaking pyramid? That would have gotten it done. But man, when I saw that Meltzer Alvarez selfie, it just put me in a good mood for the majority of the night. Kazarian's second rope botch would have made Sid proud. Like, that's the type of high quality second rope work we expect to see out of a real professional. And Kazarian's attempt to try to play it off was freaking epic. While he didn't break a leg, he did his best. And for that, Kazarian, I salute you. Josh Barnett, after the opening tag match, featuring whatever the hell team and who gives a crap team, you could hear as they pretend like they're cutting to commercial, but there's a drop-off, and they don't, and they stay there live, and you can hear Barnett saying to JR, how about they get them the fuck out of the ring? Because that's exactly what you want to hear on live television on a Sunday night. <laughs> Barnett, the best thing he's done on commentary ever. Get the fuck out, get the fuck out of the ring. <laughs> In all seriousness, no. What else was a highlight of this night? Yano showing that comedy done right is great comedy indeed. And regardless of what the angry grandpas yelling at the clouds like Cornette or others might say, comedy has a place in professional wrestling. And specifically when we're talking about New Japan and this strong style stuff, you need balance to the force. You need something to counterweigh all the other serious, hard-hitting stuff that you do. And Yano fits that role perfectly. Man, he was great on this show. Him and Archer and what they did was outstanding. And it was really outstanding for New Japan. And frankly, I would have much rather seen a singles match featuring Yano than a damn tag match. But that said, though, Yano was magnificent. Cody Rhodes. What am I going to say about Cody Rhodes? Cody Rhodes, it cannot be denied, had heat with that crowd, and he played up to it really, really well. Even though initially, because this company didn't know what the hell they were doing last night in terms of the production of the programming, you had a microphone issue from the jump, just making Cody look ridiculous. And he doesn't need help looking ridiculous because he is freaking ridiculous. But it was one of these things. Keep it basic, keep it simple. The fans are feeding one way. Cody didn't sit there and go all over the place and do all this other dumb crap. You keep it short, you keep it simple. You get to where the people can relate to and understand what's going on. Now, don't give me that crap about he's the biggest heel and he's the biggest star. Fuck all that shit. He's riding the coattails of what Kenny Omega and others have done. Get real. And Cody Rhodes can still eat a big fucking cock and Cody Rhodes can go fuck right off, that lying piece of shit. That said, though, this freaking promo that he had, and then the, of course, because it's Cody Rhodes, three and a quarter to three and a half star match, was what you would expect out of him. He was solid, and he can still eat a dick. Rey Mysterio. It was outstanding to see him, even though, of course... New Japan or Access TV, whoever you want to blame, I blame everybody here, screwed up the big reveal of, oh my god, it's Booyaka Booyaka 619, Rey Mysterio, R-E-Y, here we go, what the hell do you know? But seriously, Rey Mysterio showed up, and it felt like a big deal, I mean, because this is a guy that's been a big star in wrestling for over two damn decades now, and then talking about how... He's got a bucket list, and part of his bucket list is to wrestle for New Japan. Like, that's one of those things. Even though he's originally scheduled to wrestle uh, Jushin Thunder Liger, and that would have been great. You know, one of those matchups we've seen over the years and it would have been great to see again for a nostalgia trip on a show that could have used some type of attraction like that. 
It's also cool to point to something towards the future. And then the match with Liger and Osprey. Osprey is annoying as bricks. And Liger is Liger even at 50-something damn years of age. The match was okay. But afterwards, I thought it was great how Rey Mysterio thought it was important enough. Even though he wasn't going to wrestle this match. He didn't just go and leave and go backstage. He took a seat in the crowd and he sat there and watched putting this match over between Osprey and Liger saying, even though I'm not in it, it's important enough. I don't even want to waste my time going in the back. I want to sit there and sit down and watch this. It's those small things that make such a damn difference. And this whole thing to me was just an example of how legends are done right. And then after the match, Osprey's putting over Liger. And then he's issuing the challenge to Rey Mysterio. This crap was great. This is exactly what you should be doing. All those flips and crap don't matter if you can sit there and do this. There's nothing wrong sometimes with doing the flips and stuff. But these guys try to reinvent the damn wheel and it's just not necessary. It just isn't. Look at the reaction the thought of Osprey and Mysterio at some point in time got from that crowd there. And then when eventually everything breaks loose and here comes Marty Skrull, whatever the hell he's supposed to be about, I still can't figure it out because New Japan won't bother to tell me what's supposed to be so damn great about him. After he whacks Osprey in the back, here comes Mysterio, and Skrull takes Ray's mask off. And then here comes the young lion, whatever the fuck they call those kids, and they cover up the face. Like... It's those things as wrestling fans that make sense. Knowing the importance of lucha history and understanding the importance of protecting your identity as a luchador and what happens when you take off the mask. It is an ultimate sign of disrespect. All these things you could do and it's the simple stuff that works so well. Just like Ishii and Suzuki's freaking drunk uncle at the family reunion slap fight. This crap was freaking epic. You didn't even need Okada. You didn't even need Sabre Jr. I really wish, frankly, that this match was one-on-one -on -one at this damn show. Because this show really could have needed. But these two guys going back and forth and fucking clobbering the hell out of each other was freaking great. And then Ishii having enough respect to sit there and be choked out to the point of not even reacting to where the ref has to call for the bell. So that way he can help put over Sabre Jr. who is going on to face Okada. It's like this match made so much sense on so many different levels. Ishii and Suzuki. Now you really want to see them go one on one. Sabre looks strong going into a match with Okada that for all intents and purposes he really has no business being in if you want to be realistic about it. But now you've sat there and made him look better. It's like, oh my god, it's so simple, it's brilliant. And then we get to the main event. And yes, it featured the Bucks of Suck and fuck the Young Bucks and who they are and what all they represent. And screw all this crap of doing spot after spot after spot after spot with no selling, no purpose, no consequence, no meaning, no significance. The fucking hell with all these false finishes. The hell with sitting there and doing these 300 Meltzer, Alvarez, straight up your ass drivers if you're going to kick out of every damn one of them. All that shit is still aggravating. And when you get to almost four hours where you've seen pretty much all these spots all throughout the night and almost every damn match has been a tag match, it's really hard for this Golden Lovers versus Young Bucks match to stand out. Knowing I've already seen enough irritating spots, why the hell do I want to sit there and see the freaking Bucks of Suck? But this was all about the Omega Odyssey and Kenny Omega. And this main event worked for me if for no other reason than I understood what Kenny Omega's character was going through. I understood and could relate to what he was dealing with. This is his friend and friend from the past these are his boys now they have done this they have done that but he's done this he came up with this dude he got up with this dude all of this stuff and he's torn the entire time like this is his tag team but these are still his dudes but he doesn't want to see this guy get hurt he doesn't really want to hurt them like so much of this made sense it was great in terms of that the other action and stuff annoys the hell out of me with all the other crap that you do and it's double knees to the head one time and that's what finishes it? But the story makes a world of sense. The newly reformed tag team of the Golden Lovers go over. Kenny Omega cuts a promo to end the night. Even afterwards, you have the Bucks of Suck and you're having this kind of emotional play between them and Kenny Omega. One of them shakes his hand, one of them doesn't. 
It made sense. And sometimes that's all it takes. The match itself, huh. The story, though, I got into, I dug, and I understood. It's not like Hangman Page versus Jay White. I understand none of that. I understand why no reason anybody would get behind either one of these two, specifically freaking Jay White. Switchblade, Slingblade, how about cut my damn throat? That garbage was terrible. It was boring. B-O-R ring. Like, who the hell put a U.S. title on him instead of Omega? Jesus Christ, I'm not the biggest Omega guy in the world. Well, what the hell made you think Jay White was over enough to carry that damn strap? Why in the hell wouldn't I come back here to the States with Kenny Omega as the U.S. champion? I'm just saying. Even I'll acknowledge that Omega is a big deal in the New Japan circle. And in the grand scheme of things, if you're trying to expand here into the U.S. audience, you want to do it with Omega who can actually get himself over with that crowd? Or Jay White who freaking can't? Unbelievable. But even though there were moments that were good, that were respites from the suck, this was largely a bad show. And I do not care how many excuses there are going to be given to me on social media. I do not care how pathetic, def how many de pathetic defenses and excuses and justifications you'll get in the comments of this video. It is okay to admit that this show sucked. Because it did. And don't tell me, well, they've done other shows that have been worse. Okay, and that means those shows sucked and they suck worse. It doesn't change the fact that this one was terrible. For a show that is so important in the constructs of 2018 and beyond for what New Japan is trying to do and how they are trying to expand into the U.S. marketplace as the type of fan that they are going after, whether you like it or not, that is the truth. If they've already got you, they don't care because clearly they will have you no matter what. But this type of show that got me to tune in, where my time is money, this company wasted a whole lot of my damn time and my money on Sunday night. Period. I'm looking for something else. I want something else. And each time I give this damn company a chance to give me something else, they'd rather just let Meltzer and all the cuckin' fanboy sheep beat off to the same old crap. And eventually, that will come to bite them in the ass. And if you don't like what I had to say about this, that's tough. This is one shitty show. Accept it. You can kiss my ass. Because remember, I'm the Schlag Daddy, and this is Oterra Central. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. And after watching all them other damn reviews where they're going to go googly, goggly, giggly tits over this damn show, you come here, and you watch it, and you feel like you're getting the honest, real deal, even if you don't necessarily agree with it. And we could use some damn credibility instead of all this fanboy cucking that's going on on the Internet of Wrestling today.